Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who picked Miguel Torres to defeat Brian Bowles. And I'm here to talk about Cody Brundage versus Zachary Reese. Cody Brundage is 9-5 and five as a pro, 29 years old, and he's given up 4 inches of height and 5 inches of reach to 29-year-old Reese, who is 6-0 and oh as a pro. Cody, he's got a lot of momentum after a big win over Jacob Malkoon. It was a disqualification. He was getting dominated in that fight, but he was struck illegally. And given the choice, he chose victory. And I can't blame him because he's here today. But he is a guy that has a lot of had a lot of trouble in the UFC. That's where he suffered four of his five losses. The other one, of course, being on the Contender Series. So uh, all at the UFC level. Uh, but he's a guy that, uh, in my opinion, I can't trust a lot about Cody Brundage. I trust the fact that he's dangerous. And I trust... Uh, Overall, I trust him in round one. Uh, you know, I think he's a guy with a good skill set, well versed wrestling, but even that's not to be relied upon, not for the whole fight, in my opinion. But uh, he's a guy that knocked out Treshawn Gore, submitted Dalcha Lundjambula. Uh, those are guys that were giving him a good fight, both of them, and he caught both of them out of nowhere, pretty much, uh, with a knockout and a submission. And uh, and a disqualification, as I mentioned, against Jacob Malkoon. It's another part of his skill set. But uh, de defensively, he's vulnerable. He's been TKO'd twice against William Knight in the Contender Series, defending takedowns against Mikhail, o Mikhail Oleksaychuk in the middle or end of round one, where he was doing well in round one. And then Mikhail turned things around, got out from underneath him, and the fight was over in seconds, which I've got to be honest, it was discouraging. Uh, for It looked like Cody Brundage was discouraged, uh, you know, in that moment. He certainly wasn't unconscious. Uh, and he was submitted against Adolfo Vieta, which that's forgivable because it's Adolfo Vieta. But also, I don't trust his cardio so much. Uh, Cody Brundage, even though he was the last man standing, I think, against uh, Nick Maximov, that's not the most taxing fight. You know, Nick is uh, pretty much a pure wrestler grappler. But uh, against SD Dumas, that was his other decision loss. That was not even cardio or anything else. That was just poor decision making from uh, Cody Brundage. That was the last thing I expected in that fight. I thought Cody looked really good for the first 30 seconds of each round. And then he kind of let the round and eventually the fight slip away by going for guillotines and losing position and repeating the mistake another two times. But, uh, yeah, that's another knock about him as a fighter. It's not like fight IQ or fighter IQ, whatever they say, isn't a thing. It is a thing. And uh, really what I, the only thing he's got going for him at the UFC level is his danger. Against Zachary Reese here... Cody could be the guy to uh, show him that there are levels. There's always that type of fight, and Cody is definitely the best guy he's fought, despite not having the prettiest record. Uh, Zachary Reese does have the prettiest record. He's 6 0. All six wins are finishes, and all six wins, all six finishes are in like a minute. He had one fight go a little longer, but every other one of them is over very quickly. He's. A very dangerous guy, six foot four, uh, seems to have good power and good striking altogether. You know, uh, not like he's uh, Mirko Krokop or anything, but I like his striking on the outside. He's got good low kicks and uh, decent power for sure. And on the ground, he's dangerous, if nothing else. He's dangerous, got good opportunistic submissions, seen him... Uh, what do he do? He set up a he set up a triangle choke. Seen him hit the arm bar. I've I seen him hit a triangle. I think that was as an amateur. Uh, I believe it was him. I don't know. I've seen every one of his fights. I'm pretty sure, aside from his one defeat, which was as an amateur to Kevin Holland, and that's a fight I really wanted to see just to see what they looked like in 2012. But I'll say this: Zachary Reese lost a decision to him. Kevin Holland isn't the fighter he is today. Wasn't the fighter he is today back in 2012, but he's still Kevin Holland. 
So I think Zachary Reese, by losing to a guy like Kevin Holland and not getting finished in a fight where you're losing, it's it speaks well for him, maybe being a natural fighter, having some good traits. But other than that, he's never really been tested too much. He's passed every test pretty quickly. They're all in round one. He had one fight as an amateur going to round two, and that was a five-round fight. He was crowded against the cage for round one, and I think that was really part of the plan, to suck some of the life out of his opponent, and he did so. He never let the guy get him down, defended the takedown well, and eventually started uh, pounding the guy into exhaustion and submission at the end of round two and ended up taking his back and choking him out. I think uh, he's got good submissions, you know, a uh, good opportunistic submission guy, but I still think there's not a lot to trust. You, you, like, you can't trust him at the UFC level until you see him in a competitive fight and you see him win in a competitive fight. So while there's all these gaping holes in Cody Brundage's game, that's at the UFC level with however many fights he's had in the UFC. Eight? I don't know. But he's had quite a career already. The majority of his fights are in the UFC. Zachary Reese has steamrolled largely bums. He choked out one guy, Aaron Phillips, uh, just guillotined him in 30 seconds. That guy uh, was on the Ultimate Fighter, but never really went anywhere. I think Petrovsky choked him out. But uh, still, he's largely unproven. So I am picking Zachary Reese, and I'm not betting on this, not yet anyway, but uh, Cody Brundage, the value's on Cody Brundage. I, I think Cody Brundage, at this point, I guess I can say... Uh, I don't know if I'd say he's underrated or whatever, but everybody respects and sees that he's a vulnerable fighter. But again, that's at the UFC level. I don't know how Zachary Reese would do against Adolfo Vieira, Mikhail Oleksiychuk, William Knight even. You know, I think Zachary Reese has a lot going for him, but uh, just based on being an unknown, I'm not going to count on him. So he's my pick, but he's not my bet. I will get drunk and maybe bet on Cody Brundage. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. Check out my other videos.